Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. Back in 2016, I discovered a comet that was at the time designated P2016 J3 Stereo. It was named after the Stereo spacecraft that I used to discover the comet, while both the spacecraft and the comet were on the opposite side of the Sun from the Earth before the comet was visible from Earth. You can see the position of the comet at the time that I discovered it depicted in this chart and the position of the comet along its orbit marked by this red crosshair. And you can see how that places it almost directly across the Sun as seen from Earth. So it was not visible from Earth during that time. You would have had to have been staring almost directly at the Sun and you would not have seen it. But the stereo spacecraft being on the opposite side of the Sun from Earth at the time it did have a line of sight to the comet at a relatively close distance, close enough that it was able to see the comet, but I was the one who discovered it in those images, so I got discovery credit for it. Let me pull up the video uh, showing the pictures that I was looking at when I made that discovery. Uh, these are the pictures. I processed these raw FITS files from the spacecraft myself. The FITS files are the raw, highest quality versions of the pictures and yet you can see how faint the comet is. I highlight here moving from top left to bottom right and you can see it's just this faint dot moving through the images. Now Earth is actually also visible in these frames as this bright uh, barely moving object on the right. Mars is moving faster behind it there um, but because the Sun is just off the left side of the frame here if you're trying to look at this from Earth and you're looking through our atmosphere, you won't be able to see it because the sun would be blinding you. But because the stereo spacecraft is in space and it's not having to deal with the glare of an atmosphere around it, uh, it is able to see the comet uh, with the backdrop of the solar corona and heliosphere uh, behind it. But it was later confirmed by astronomers on uh, Earth and so at the time it was uh, confirmed from Earth's surface. It received the permanent number designation 414P Stereo, and that's what it's now known as. So in 2025, it has become visible from Earth again, and I've actually taken my first picture of my own comet using my own personal telescope and camera equipment. So I took this picture on Sunday morning using my 11-inch Celestron Nexstar GPS telescope and a Canon 90D SLR. I took 25 exposures right at the start of astronomical twilight and aligned them based on the stars using astrometry to align on the comet's orbit and average the pictures together to produce uh, this color photograph. And this is true color and you can actually see the green glow of my comet here in this picture. So I was pretty happy about that. This is the first picture I've got of my comet using my own personal equipment. Uh, and other amateurs have seen it in the last few weeks as well. But it is quite faint, uh, much, much dimmer than anything anything you can see by eye. And it was only visible uh, about, about 14.75 uh, degrees above the horizon on Sunday morning, right at the start of astronomical twilight. So very low over the horizon, very faint and hard to detect, but I was able to get it. So again, to people who believe that NASA isn't actually sending uh, spacecraft beyond low Earth orbit into solar orbits or onto the other side of the solar system. If that were the case, how did I discover a comet using a NASA spacecraft on the opposite side of the Sun before it could be seen from Earth and then have it confirmed uh, from Earth both by professionals and amateurs and now even myself with my own equipment uh, in years later. So that's pretty cool to me, but uh, Unfortunately, when I went to start making this video announcing the return of my comet, I discovered that there's actually a number of videos on YouTube in the last day or so already talking about it, but in a very sensationalist, uh, nonsense kind of way. In fact, this video, uh, which is uh, just published within the last 24 hours, has almost a quarter million views already and claims that NASA's on alert and that there's this swarm of comets coming in that might potentially even be dangerous. So let's take a quick look at what this video has to say. It's worth pausing on just how rare it is to see seven major comets sharing the stage at once. C-2022 N2 Pan Stars marks the opening of the 2025 comet season, reaching perihelion on July 31st at 3.82 astronomical units from the Sun. 
So I want to highlight something there that the criteria here seems to just be comets reaching perihelion, even if that perihelion distance is 3.82 astronomical units away, which is pretty far as he's about to say. Its distant path keeps it well beyond Mars, where sunlight is thin and only the most sensitive telescopes can track its progress. PanStars sets the outer boundary for the swarm, a quiet start before the more dramatic arrivals. Ah, oh, I'm glad to know my comet's a more dramatic arrival, right? C slash 2025 R2 Swan follows, discovered on September 11th and racing to perihelion. Just a day later, September 12th, at 0 0.50 astronomical units. So, C2025 R2 Swan is uh, an impressive comet. It's uh, putting on quite a show for amateur astronomers, especially in the southern hemisphere. But it's also interesting because it was discovered using a sun-watching spacecraft, SOHO. The SWAN instrument is on that spacecraft, and that's what this comet is named for. It was discovered using the SWAN instrument on the SOHO spacecraft by a fellow amateur astronomer. Like the comet I discovered using the Stereo spacecraft, uh, it was discovered by amateur, an amateur astronomer using a sun-watching spacecraft. In fact, it was discovered uh, by a gentleman who is a Ukrainian amateur astronomer by the name of Vladimir Bazugli. So congratulations, Vladimir, on that discovery. And I'm hoping to get on it myself with my own equipment uh, here soon when time and weather allow. So stay tuned to my channel for that. The highlight comes October 21st, when SWAN will sweep past Earth at just 0.25 astronomical units, about 37 million kilometers. So, yes, it's going to get relatively close to Earth, but not a threat to hit Earth or anything like that, not a cause for concern. There is some speculation that uh, as we get closer to Swan's orbital path, you can see I'm highlighting Swan's orbit in red here, around the beginning of October, we may even experience a new meteor shower from dust and debris left behind by the comet. But when we pass through the orbit of a comet and happen to run into some of the dust and debris left behind by that comet, we call that a meteor shower. It burns up in the atmosphere and we see a display in the sky. So I'll be looking for that myself in early October, um, but it's quite possible that uh, nothing at all will be seen. We'll just have to see. This close approach makes it a prime candidate for observation, especially in the pre-dawn sky of the Northern Hemisphere. Swan's rapid movement and geometry offer a rare chance to study a comet's interaction with both the Sun and Earth in real time. 414P slash stereo will swing around the Sun. There's my comet, 414P stereo. But I want to point out again that uh, the comet actually is very dim, even from the stereo spacecraft and the discovery images. The picture they're showing here doesn't appear to actually be my comet, at least. Uh, again, if we pull up the stereo head images where I discovered it, you can see the dramatic difference there. It is nothing but a faint dot moving through the field of view, uh, not the elongated bright object they appear to show uh, in this picture on this video. And if you look at it from Earth right now, it takes a fairly powerful telescope uh, looking quite low over the horizon at uh, astronomical twilight or even later now. Uh, to be able to see it at all as a faint green comet. Not something I would consider to be a major comet, but nevertheless, uh, it's my own you know, personal discovery and I'm quite thrilled to have found it, but it's surreal to see it now get swept up into conspiracy mongering videos and sort of these fear mongering videos about how this is some sort of unusual event and potentially even dangerous. Let me rewind back a bit uh, to where he's talking about why uh, this subject seems to be important. And I say he, but it's really seemingly an AI voice. 3i slash Atlas growing bigger by the day. As yeah, so 3i Atlas, an interstellar comet currently passing through our solar system. This is a picture I took of that comet. Again, aligned on the comet, uh, the stars are streaks and the comet is just this faint little dot right in the middle and uh, not very impressive at all, very hard to detect even with my telescope. Astronomers are mapping out this unprecedented swarm, one not seen since modern telescopes began, plotting their approaches as they race past Earth and the Sun in a tight six-month window. So, 
again, he's claiming that this is somehow unprecedented. And again, I'm calling it he, but it's, again, some sort of seemingly AI-generated voice, kind of AI slop type uh, production here. But they're claiming this is really unprecedented, potentially even dangerous. It's enough for us to see with our own eyes. But why are so many coming at once? And just how much danger or wonder could this cosmic traffic jam bring? So talking about this like it's potentially dangerous, like it's some sort of cosmic traffic jam that's unprecedented. Right now, if I go to JPL's website and pull up the small, small body database query, you can query for comets that fit a certain criteria, such as the perihelion date. He ends up covering comets in that video that span from about July to November, about a 150 day time frame. If you set that as the criteria, uh, perihelion date over that time frame, you end up with a list of about 20 comets, not counting my own discovery, 414P. So is that number unusual? That's even more than what he lists in the video. Well, if you wind the clock back to 2016, about the time that I discovered the comet uh, 414P, you find the same criteria, 150 day time span, uh, back in 2016 will produce as many as 40 comets in that kind of time span. And not just periodic comets, but long period comets as well. So here we see that this is very much not unprecedented, not unusual. In fact, literally in 2016, about the time I discovered my comet, there were twice as many comets reaching perihelion uh, at around that time frame, around that same kind of time span. So no, there's nothing unusual or unprecedented about this. The only sort of unusual thing is that right now there happens to be an interstellar comet among them, uh, 3i Atlas, only the third interstellar comet discovered, currently passing through the solar system and uh, passing through at a perihelion point that's actually on the other side of the solar system from us. So yeah, that's about the only thing that's noteworthy about this, other than the fact that R2 Swan popped up and it's already bright enough to put on an impressive display for amateur astronomers to photograph, um, but not anything to worry about from a safety standpoint. Here we see 3 i Atlas uh, heading for its perihelion on the opposite side of the sun from Earth, not a risk to hit us at all. I know there's been speculation about it potentially being some sort of alien spacecraft or interstellar vehicle that might slow down as it approaches perihelion and drop into an orbit around the sun. It's an interesting thought experiment, but we haven't seen evidence of it moving in some unusual way that would be uh, impossible for a comet or indicate that it is under intelligent control. So nothing to worry about there, again, from a safety standpoint or uh, any need for sensationalist videos claiming uh, that it is a danger that we should be worried about. Uh, so I've dealt with that kind of claim over the years before with Comet Elenin, with Comet Ison, and here we have, uh, you know, supposedly a swarm of comets, including one I discovered myself back in 2016, currently passing uh, a point where it's uh, approaching perihelion in about a week, and I've photographed it myself, but it is not something to worry about, and it's certainly not an unusually uh, large or impressive comet that would indicate something unusual is going on. The number of comets currently in the inner solar system is completely within expectations, and the ones that they list in that video, other than Swan, aren't even that visually impressive right now. So that about does it for this video, but I will be uh, working to photograph Swan as well uh, as it gets closer to Earth and becomes more visible in the Northern Hemisphere, hopefully, in the coming days. Uh, so thanks for watching, and until next time, clear skies.